What's up guys? In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a quick technique to make your digital paintings look and feel a little more like oil paintings. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so we got a quick one for you this time. Um, so I recently did a landscape painting and it got quite a lot of traction online on Instagram and Twitter and ArtStation and all that stuff. And one of the biggest responses that I got is everybody really liked the texture and kind of the, uh, the, the quote unquote real painting look that I was able to achieve on this. Now, I did quite a few different techniques, um, one of them being just taking a canvas texture and putting it on top of everything, changing the color blend or the uh, layer blending mode to overlay, and then lowering the opacity to like 20%. And that gives you a really good canvas look. But what this is, this is actually gonna be a technique video that I'm gonna show you a little bit in real time what the technique was that I used. And then you're gonna see some time-lapse painting of me working on another landscape, which I'll, I'll show you here in a second. Um, but I'm using the same idea. And the great thing about this technique, it doesn't need specific brushes. It does not need a specific uh, like program. You don't need to use, a, you know, a wet blending mixer brush type stuff. You can, and it's going to make the, the effect that much greater and that much more impactful, but you don't need it. In fact, I'm going to show you guys just using a hard round brush what this is, and it's a very, I'm going to say time consuming. Um, it, it just takes a little bit of time to get this look, but whenever you see why and whenever you see how it works, you're probably going to agree that it's worth the wait. So let me, uh, sorry about that, got to take a drink. But let's hop on over to um, Photoshop here. So let's just come right here. So right now I just have this um, set up. We're going to do two different types of painting. One on this left-hand side is kind of your standard quote-unquote digital art brushwork stuff. But then this right one, we're just going to do a little bit of the technique. That way you can kind of see the difference. But I also want to show you, this is a landscape I'm working on right now. More of kind of the fantasy-based stuff. But I've already started to do the technique that we're going to be doing. And like whenever you zoom way in, you can see it getting all muddy and weird and stuff like that. But that's kind of the point of what we're going to be doing. So, real quick, what what am I going to go for in this look? The thing with traditional painting, whether it's acrylics or oils, um, watercolor is a little different, but really with the type of paint that you can just stack on top of each other, there's this thing that people get scared of. And what it is, is not mixing the exact same color. So let's say you've been working on a painting. Uh, you worked on it for three or four hours today. Then you got to put your paint supplies up and then, you know, you got to come back tomorrow and continue on the painting. Well, you can have a wet palette. You can have a way to save uh, one, you know, one mixture of paint and use it for the next day. But let's say you just run out of that and you need to remix that same quote unquote recipe, like three parts alizarin crimson and one part, you know, ivory black and one part titanium white. So you can have that ratio in your head, but each time you mix it, it's going to be slightly different. And a lot of people, especially newer artists, if they're working with traditional stuff, get worried about that. They're like, oh no, it's not exactly the same. It's not going to look right in the painting. And I'm here to tell you, that's actually a feature of traditional art, not a bug. And we need to replicate that to where our brush strokes are pretty close to the same with kind of the same color and definitely the same value, but the hue and the tone change. Now, I know what a lot of you are saying, oh, there's a, there's a thing in, in Photoshop or in my you know, favorite painting software called Color Jitter. We're not gonna use that. Um, I'm not a big fan of Color Jitter. I have a few brushes that have it, but you can't control it. And this is all about control. So let me, kind of just showcase let's say we're doing skin tone 
okay, let's just say we're doing, I'm, you know, let's just say we're doing a, a kind of a, a darker, um, darker skin tone. So let's come over here. Let me grab just kind of here. Let's bring, yeah, something maybe right here is kind of our mid value. This is going to be the kind of traditional, <laughs> sounds weird to say this, the, the standard digital painting way of doing things. What I see a lot of people do and what I do from time to time, if I need something really highly rendered or something like that, you're gonna see something like this. So we're gonna have this right here. And then let's say we're going to do some highlights. So we're going to, let's see, bring a little less saturation and kind of brighten up the value a little bit. And then we're going to do the highlights right here. Kind of go into there. And then let's say we're going to do the uh, shadows. So we're going to up the saturation and then lower the value. So it's going to be darker. And then we're going to do something like around here. So yeah, we can just kind of make this an orb. Why not? just to kind of show what this is, and then kind of mix in between. Let's kind of straighten that out a little bit. So yeah, we'll just make this a sphere. Why not? Let's do kind of that Terminator line. So see, you're kind of getting that. Normally what you think of with the hard, round brush, you get some blends in here. Sure. And then let's bring that back right here. Bring in some of that balance light. All right, so you have something like this, right? It's not great, but you know, you, you get it. You have your lighter, you have your darker. So we're going to do the same exact thing, but using this quote unquote like oil painting technique. We're going to start the same way. We're going to start the same way. In fact, we're even going to use the same. I should have done this from the beginning, but I didn't know I was going to make a sphere. Um, let's say we're going to do this same sort of deal, right? So at this first part, we're going to just kind of do exactly the same thing. We're just going to make our shape. We're going to make sure it's in there. But what we're really going to do and really make this take off is start changing our hue and our saturation, maybe a little bit of value, depending on where we're at. But do that for every brush stroke. I know it's going to take a while, but hear me out. It's worth it. Um, I made the joke whenever I posted the painting that I've never done more four to seven pixel big dots in my life, but that's how we get this effect. And you can change it here. So let's say I have this. I'm going to oh, saturation a little bit and kind of like that right there so we'll do a few of these very lightly glaze it hit that again bring up here lightly glaze it change that lightly change it um let's do a little bit darker here it works really well with um mono uh, monochromatic so if you stay within one color family and then you just kind of work your way that way you can do that but I'll show you the secret to speed this up. Because you could do that, then you could come over here and do that, then come over here and do that, then come over here. And you're just like randomly clicking. You can get some control that way, but after a while it's just monotonous. But the secret is use your sliders. So if I want small, tiny differences, I'm talking tiny differences, I can like grab this highlight, come over to my value, which is the bottom most grid, go up just a little, hit it, maybe go up a little bit more, dot it, color pick, 
I want that to be a little darker just for variety's sake. There. I want this one to be a little bit lighter. Got it. Um, but let's say I actually want to change the temperature a little bit on this. So I'm going to click that one. And then on my hue, which is my topmost one, I'm going to go over a little bit more orange. See that? It's such a subtle, tiny shift on the click here. But you see that. It, for whatever reason, it just pops. That little, tiny, tiny tweak. Do that one. Let's go a little bit over more red. Bam. Same thing. Let's take that highlight. Come over. Got it. Uh, take that mid-tone right there. Do that. And change. Uh, let's change the value a little darker. So what you're going to see is there's so much more depth and variety whenever you start introducing these slight tweaks. Now, I can do this literally, and I usually do when I do this method, for hours. Do that, do that, do that. Change saturation, change lightness, change value. Come down here. We need it darker. We need it less saturated. We need it more saturated. And you're just introducing these tiny little nuances. And then, you know, you can grab a, a smudge brush or something. And then just go in and kind of tweak your, uh, your edges a little. So if we, like, come over here. Uh, let, me, let me grab that smudger right there. And then whenever you kind of blend this stuff together, you don't want to get rid of all of it. But whenever you start blending some of this, you're going to start getting that more natural paint look, you know. Um, and it really does help. Okay. It does help quite a bit. You start getting a little bit more lively of a piece. And as you can see here, see these little tiny nuances? These little tiny bits. And I mean, this is about where I'm zoomed in at um, whenever I come in and I do this. So we're going to watch some time lapse of this. Um, I already have some stuff I know I'm going to correct. I think I'm going to get rid of maybe this right here. I don't like, I like this that it breaks up where the highlights are coming down, but I don't think I like it blocking all of it. Also, I kind of need to flip my values from this to this one and kind of flip these two. I'm still deciding if I want to keep this or if I just want this to triangle out of the, you know, triangle point out of the composition or not. But, you know, I just have some travelers here. Um, I have some of this stuff here. So, but you can literally see I've been taking wet brushes and just going over and going over and going over and nuance and nuance and nuance. Just little bits. But it does add up. And it does give you a little bit of something. So hopefully that made sense. Do your tweaks of your, your hue. Do your tweaks of your value. Um, your saturation a little bit. Just know anytime you go less saturated, it's going to be kind of, it's going to recede back a little bit. Um, so keep that in mind. But this should hopefully get you thinking about how you're putting down your color. Say you have your base colors down there. Just add a little bit of variety. You know. Click the click the uh, feel that you like, you know, up it, maybe lower that, change the value, change the uh, hue, maybe make it a little warmer, a little more saturated, bring down that value a little bit. And yeah, it, it's it's fun to play with. Um, it's really really cool, especially and like I said. If you're using, if you end up using um, kind of the more paintbrush stuff, um, the effect is going to look even better, um, especially like this. You don't need it. It's not necessary, but I do think it, it definitely helps. So, um, you see, you have something like this. And then that way you don't have to use a smudge tool as much, but then you come in here and you can see this nice little variety of strokes. So... Hopefully, th this gives you something to kind of
play with and chew on for a little bit. If you're, if you're worried that a piece that you're working on is quote unquote flat, try this. Uh, try this sort of, of look. Try this sort of color management, tone management. I think you might be surprised, especially if you introduce this stuff into like your shadow area. I think you'll be real, real happy. Um, but yeah, let's get into the uh, get into the time lapse, and we'll just play some tunage, and you know, hopefully you'll see me work, and you'll see me zoom in a lot, and do this exact technique. Um, I'll just keep all of this up, and then yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, let me take back over here. Yeah, if you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments. This is actually going to be part of the second color theory course that's going to come out. Um, we're going to discuss in detail why this works and why the human brain and the eye, even if we don't use color, even if we just use value, all grayscale, why this type of thing is more appealing to us to look at and study as a painting instead of like a movie or photograph or whatever. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Hopefully it gets you out of some sort of rut, but enjoy this little time lapse. We'll do some zoom ins and stuff. I don't know if I'll finish the piece, but uh, we'll make some pretty mean progress on it. Um, using this technique, we're going to get some nice colors in there, really kind of draw the viewer's eye into it. So, yeah, we'll see you next time. Peace.